Hi, I'm Dr. Nurse Vicky and welcome to my YouTube channel. Hey there future nurse, Dr. Vicky here. And today we're going to talk about a disorder that you really need to understand when we are going through the GU system. And that is acute kidney injury. Now, before we get started, I want you to head over to nursebossstore.com. So nursebossstore.com is my website where I have all the nursing resources for you to pass your exams. These resources are super simple to follow, super simple to read, and you'll be able to follow along this class or this lecture when you have some of my resources. So head over there and grab yourself one. All right, let's dive into acute kidney injury. First thing that we need to understand is what is acute kidney injury? So let's break down the term. Acute means that it is sudden. When we talk about the kidney, we know that this is an organ. And then an injury means that there is damage somewhere. So let's put this together. Acute kidney injury basically means that there is a sudden decrease in the renal function. And this can lead to a lot of problems. Remember that the kidney is like your washing machine. So it washes out all of the waste products and it really helps in terms of removing all that fluid so that there is no fluid buildup. But when there is that decrease in the kidney or in the renal function, we are going to see one, a buildup of waste in the blood Two, we are also going to see fluid overload. And three, we are going to see electrolyte imbalances. But remember, acute kidney injury is reversible. This means that once the problem is solved and, you know, it ends in recovery, this is reversible. But chronic kidney disease is not reversible. What are the causes of AKI? There are three major causes that we need to remember. The first one is pre-renal injury. The second one is intra-renal injury. And lastly, we have post-renal injury. So let's take it one step at a time. So pre-renal injury basically means that there is an injury before the kidneys. So this means that there is an issue with perfusion to the kidneys. But what can cause this issue of lack of that flow or perfusion to the kidneys? Number one, we have burns. So when a patient is suffering with burns, this can cause AKI because it's a pre-renal injury, so before the kidneys. Number two is hyper, hypo, sorry, volemia. Number three, dehydration. And number four is any issue with the heart, such as an MI. All of this can cause that pre-renal injury. Number two is intra-renal injury. Basically, this means that there is an injury within the kidneys. This is due to damage to the nephrons of the kidneys. For example, glomerulonephritis. This can cause injury within the kidneys. And nephrotoxic drugs, such as NSAIDs. This can cause that um, injury within the kidneys. Number three is post-renal injury. And this is when there is injury after the kidneys. So that blockage is going to cause that post-renal injury. So when there is a blockage in the urinary tract after the kidneys, this is going to cause that oh, post-renal injury. So the first one is any renal calculi or kidney stones. And the second one is enlarged prostate. So now that we know the three major causes of AKI, what are the stages 
of AKI. There are four major stages that you need to know. The first stage is initiation stage. This is when there is a cause that creates that injury. So first, there needs to be an injury to the kidneys. So that is the initiation stage. You're going to start to see those signs and symptoms starting to appear because now there is an injury to the kidneys. So for example, let's say that you have a patient who had a burn. Well, if this is going to cause an AKI, this will start with the initiation stage because you're going to start to see those signs and symptoms because of burns. And now that we know the time that is going to cause it, we know that this is a pre-renal injury, okay? Stage number two is the oliguric stage. When we say oliguria, this means that the urine output is less than 400 ml per day. So once we see that, we know that the patient has entered into the oliguric stage. It is also important that we know some of the values because this is going to help us in terms of the lab values, such as the bun, the creatinine, and all of that. So let's go through that. In terms of bun or B-U-N, okay, which stands for blood urea nitrogen, it ranges from 7 to 20 mg dl. And we know that creatinine ranges from 0 0.6 to um, 1.2 mg dl. Okay, all right, got that. So once we know these ranges, we know that if it is greater than 20, there is an increase in the BUN. And if it is greater than 1.2, we have an issue with the creatinine. Okay? All right. So let's now move on to potassium. We know that potassium is 3.525. So if we see something above 5 milli equivalent per liter, we know that now there is an issue with the potassium. So it's important for us to know these values because sometimes in our exams, we're only going to see these values and we need to understand what does these value mean, okay? So first, we know that with oliguria, the urine output will be low. So we have low urine output, okay? Low urine output. So that less than 400 ml per day. With the bun and the creatinine, it's going to increase. And with the potassium as well, we're going to see that increase as well. And with the phosphorus and the calcium, remember that phosphorus and calcium has an inverse relationship. So phosphorus, sorry, is increased, okay? What's going to happen to the calcium? Decreased. And there is also going to be high concentrated urine. What does this mean? This means that the urine specific gravity is going to be high. Why is that so? Let's talk about this. So because the urine is less, so now we have a decrease in the urine output, of course the urine is going to be very concentrated. Okay? And the urine specific gravity is what measures this concentration so now it ranges from 1.010 to 1.030 so once we see a concentrated urine we know that we're talking about the urine specific gravity so once it's less we know that it is the patient is well hydrated, but once it is high, elevated, we know that the patient is dehydrated. So let's remember this. So now that we know our lab values, it's also important that we know our nursing interventions. So what are some things that we need to do and we need to remember? Number one, in terms of the urine, we need to remember to put our patient on strict 
INOs. INOs basically means input or intake, sorry, and output. Okay, so we need to put our patients on a strict INO. In terms of our creatinine and bun, we need to remember that we have to give our patient a low protein diet. Why low protein diet? A low protein diet because urea is a waste product from protein that breaks down in the liver. So if we know this, we need to know that we are going to give our patients what a low protein diet. For potassium, we need to remember that if the potassium is increased, that this can cause some issues okay, in terms of the cardiac. So we need to monitor EKGs. And when there is an increase in potassium or hyperkalemia, we are going to notice a tall peaked T wave, wide QRS, and a prolonged PR interval. So you have to always monitor the EKGs. And also place your patient on a strict low potassium diet. Okay, so we have that low potassium diet. Okay, good. Now let's go to that increase in fluids. We also want to monitor the patient weight. And their vital signs, monitoring their blood pressure and their pulse as well. Because we know that when there is an increase in fluids, this can affect our blood pressure and our pulse. Also for the urine, we also want to monitor the intake and output. And also don't forget your phosphorus and your calcium. You want to monitor these electrolytes as well. Now also monitor in terms of the increased fluids, also monitor the lung sounds, okay? Let's not forget the lung sounds because we don't want to hear those crackles. Remember those fluids? It can cause those crackle sounds in the lungs as well as assessing for swelling, monitoring the O2 saturation, respiratory, because all of that fluid can go to the lungs. The next stage is the diuresis stage whereby there is going to be an increase in the urine production. And it's going to be 3 to 6 liters per day. So now, instead of a concentrated urine, you're going to have the urine with low um, specific gravity because it will be diluted, as well as you're going to notice hypokalemia. So what are you going to do? You're still going to monitor input and output, monitor your patient's daily weight, um, and also we need to prevent any type of dehydration. So with that, we are going to put our patients on IV fluid. So dehydration. So you're going to place our patient on IV fluids, okay? Because we want to make sure that our patients are not dehydrated. And also, you're going to monitor for any hypotension, dehydration, and hypovolemia. And lastly, we are in the recovery phase. So remember, the first phase is what? Initiation. Then we move on to oliguric, decrease in the urine. And then diuresis, an increase in the urine production. And lastly, when we are able to treat these phases, we end up in the recovery phase. And in this phase, everything starts to be normal. The GFR returns to normal. The kidneys start to function normally. The urine output returns to normal levels, bun and creatinine and electrolytes. And so everything starts to work together again. Let's remember our GFR level. And that is between 90 to 120 ml per minute okay so let's remember that so once you see that it's within the normal ranges lab values are coming well electrolytes are coming well bun and creatinine and all of that we know that yes the patient is now at the recovery phase all right 
I hope that today you learned all about acute kidney injury. We understand what this means, that sudden decrease in the um, kidney function. We understand the causes, pre-renal, intrarenal, and post-renal, as well as the phases. And with each phase, what will be the signs and symptoms and our nursing action? So we have the initiation phase. That's when this is the onset the start there is an injury that is going to cause um, the signs and symptoms to begin then we have the oligocrete phase which is that decrease in the urine output then we have the diuresis phase sorry and then lastly we have the recovery phase